स्टार्ट प्यारा वेन द क्वेश्चन फॉर कंसिडरेशन इज वेदर ए स्टैट्यूट इज रिट्रोस्पेक्टिव विच वुड एफेक्ट द एक्जिस्टिंग राइट्स एंड लाइबिलिटीज इट इज ऑफन हेल्पफुल टू डिटरमाइन द क्वेश्चन बाय कंसिडरिंग द स्टेट ऑफ लॉ प्रायर टू द अमेंडमेंट इट इज फॉर दिज रीजन दैट आई एम प्रोसीडिंग टू ब्रीफली रेफर टू द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द बॉम्बे रेंट एक्ट इन महाराष्ट्र ड्यूरिंग द लास्ट फोर डिकेड्स द एक्ट ऑफ नाइनटीन फोर्टी सेवन विच हैज नाउ बीन अमेंडेड बाय महाराष्ट्र एक्ट नंबर सेवनटीन ऑफ नाइनटीन एटी सेवन इट सेल्फ रिप्लेस्ड एंड अर्लियर लॉ ऑन द रेंट रिस्ट्रिक्शन दैट एक्ट वॉज कॉल्ड द बॉम्बे रेंट्स हॉटेल एंड लॉजिंग हाउस रेट्स कंट्रोल एक्ट नाइनटीन फोर्टी फोर इट वॉज रिपील्ड बाय सेक्शन फिफ्टी ऑफ द एक्ट ऑफ नाइनटीन फोर्टी सेवन माय रेफरन्स टू दिस एक्ट एंड द एक्ट ऑफ नाइनटीन फोर्टी सेवन इज लिमिटेड हियर टू द प्रोविजन्स विच इनेबल ए लैंडलॉर्ड टू ऑप्टेन पोजिशन ऑफ टेनांटेड प्रिमाइसिस ऑन द ग्राउंड दैट द टेनांट इज इन एरियर्स ऑफ रेंट सेक्शन नाइन of the act of 1944 provided that the landlord shall not be entitled to the recovery of possession of any premises so long as the tenant paid or was ready and willing to pay rent to the fullest extent allowable and perform the other condition of the tenancy the corresponding provisions sub subsection 2 and 3 of section 12 in the act of 1947 when it was originally enacted were as follows para no suit for recovery of possession shall be instituted by a landlord against a tenant on the ground of non payment of the standard rent or permitted increase due until the expi- expiration of one month next after notice in writing of the demand of the standard rent or permitted increase has been served upon the tenant in the manner provided in section 106 of the transfer of property act 1882 no decree for eviction shall be passed in any such suit if at the hearing of the suit the tenant pays or tenders in court the standard rent or permitted increases then due together with the cost of suit from the above provision it is seen that if the tenant paid at the hearing of the suit or tendered in court the standard rent and permitted increases then due together with the cost a decree for eviction could be avoided it is also necessary to note that the provisions did not make any distinction between a case of arrears of rent where there is a dispute about the rent and a case of arrears of rent where there is no such dispute they were all covered by subsection 2 and 3 mentioned above however explanation was added to section 12 which said that if there was a dispute as to the amount of standard rent then it would be presumed that the tenant was ready and willing to pay such amount if an application for fixation of standard rent was made by him though the words relief against forfeiture were not used in subsection 3 of section 12 the effect of the provision was to provide relief against forfeiture to the tenant who had paid the amount at the hearing of the suit there was no mention of the first date of any other date which may be fixed by the court then came further amendment by bombay act number no. 61 of 1953 which considerably changed the completion of the suits filed for possession on the ground of arrears of rent on the part of the tenant subsection 2 of section 12 prior to the amendment in 1953 was retained in the amendment of 1953 but subsection 3 was altered considerably it is necessary to reproduce the same 
where the rent is payable by the month and there is no dispute regarding the amount of standard rent or permitted increase if such rent increases are in arrears for a period of 6 month or more and the tenant neglects to make payment thereof until the expiration of the period of 1 month after notice referred to in subsection 2 the court shall pass a decree for eviction in any such suit for recovery of possession stop